Hey everyone, DJ Ravine here, and I'm here with Danny Linton, one of our lecturers from Point Blank Music School. We're in his lovely studio here, and today we're gonna be going through a little bit more on how to synthesize your own kick, especially something a bit more of a techno kick. Yeah, yeah, that's fair to say. And this is a project of yours, a personal project that you're working yeah, on. Yeah, this is a bit of a work in progress. Uh, I would like to say it's about it's about a 60 or a 70 percent, you know what I mean? Probably, probably done, but I just wanna, I just wanna sit on it for another two weeks and ponder it and, and grow to dislike it. Of course, that's exactly how it works. <laughs> cool, so uh, anyways, uh, here's a little uh, section of it, little, uh, eight bars. And obviously, yeah, it's techno, so a key feature is this big kick drum here, which I'll just play in isolation, and it sounds like this. We get that kind of nice sort of foreboding uh, rumble that we all we all love. When you make a kick like that, would you make it from scratch or? Well, this is the thing, yeah. Ho hopefully what we'll, what we'll show you now is, is, is how to make something f like this from scratch instead of, you know, relying on, on, on kick drums from sample packs, you know, because you can really tailor and be, and be quite precise with how you want something to sound if, if you're making it. So um, we'll go through the process of making something like this. Uh, it might not be exactly the same, but it'll, it'll be pretty much similar. So um, I'll just start something new and we'll go from there. Cool, so step one is, is, um, is actually getting uh, the, the tone itself, synthesizing the, 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 the sort of raw kick drum sound. But what I'd like to stress is that this is just sort of step one of it. There's, there's quite a few steps to getting a, quite a convincing, fat sort of kick sound after that. So we're, we're not worried about the perfect sound too much now. This is very much like a step-by-step -step process. So, listen, you can use anything. I, I'm, I'm old school, so I like to use the, the old school tools. The ES2 in, in Logic is fine by me. Um, and all you really need, basically, is essentially a sign tone. Um, I'll just use the keyboard just to trigger that. And again, you can be very precise about, you know, what, what particular pitch you want this to be. That's a, that's a low F, sorry, a low B. somewhere around there, that's a, that's a low G. That sounds nice. The first thing you, you might notice is every, every time I press the key, there's a sort of, there's, there's an inconsistency as to the, um, whether, whether there's a pop or a click on the sound. That, that is all up in this right hand section here. Uh, basically, every time I, I press the key, it starts from a random point of the sine waves um, phase. So some, some sounds pop and some don't. Now, you can choose if you, either between soft, which will sound less clicky, and hard, which will sound clicky, consistently clicky, uh, whereas, again, free is, is inconsistent. Let's go with hard. Um, and then the second stage to this is just to attach um, an envelope. Would that just be like if you're using another synth that has re-trigger? Yes, yeah, you could think of it like that, I suppose. Um, so you you want it to start at the same point of the sine wave yes, each time. Yes, yeah, you want a, you want a consistent sound. Yeah, you want it, when the second time it plays, you want it to be the, the same as the first. So let's let's stay with hard there. Uh, let's attach pitch. Oh, sorry, an envelope. We'll just use envelope one in this case to the pitch. So this attack and decay is going to control the sort of the, the um, shape of the pitch over time. I just need to bring up the amount here, which is signified by the green marker. And then we've got that classic sort of punch sound. Now, from here, you just want a short decay. Oh, it's entirely up to you, but if you've got too much of a long one, you get a sort of uh, kind of, almost like an old school disco sound. Yeah, something like that, which you don't necessarily want. somewhere around there is like a nice sweet spot. Cool, that's absolutely great. Take away the sustain on the amp envelope, which is controlling the volume. 
Nice. Okay, so just let's get that in. There you go. And from here, I would just bounce it down. Yeah, just render it. Control and B. Um, and let's let's actually just delete the, the previous track. Look, we've got it in audio now. Let me just delete that. Look, so the fun starts here. That's the kind of that's the raw ingredients, if you like. Now getting shaping this into more of a sort of kick um, requires different stages. So the first thing I actually do is uh, run this through um, uh, some sort of tape saturation, which is going to add harmonics and add uh, make it less sort of dynamic and more full and punchy. So a little workaround. Um, you may or may not know this one, but if you go to this is all within Logic. If you go to Tape Delay, um, I've got a preset of this, but I'll show you how, how to set it up. You can get, basically, you can take away the delay element of it and just have the, the sort of tape element by turning off the tempo sync, putting this down to zero so there's no delay, and just go entirely wet with the signal and bring down the clip threshold. That's at the point it will start distorting. Cool, so that's step one. Also, you can use your audio editing tools. I'm just gonna hold Control and Shift and just get a nice shape on that that we associate more with a kick. Yeah, so we're nice and short there. Cool. Already sounds pretty pretty much like a kick already. Get there. Yeah. Control and B. Re-render that. And almost something you, if if you practice this enough, you can you can almost do it without hearing any. You can just look at the shape and be like, okay, that's that's looking how I want it to look. Often like an, like that nice sort of Christmas tree shape is uh, yep. often what you're going for. This is crucially important as well. I love doing this. Is just taking an EQ and just dipping out that kind of like low mid boxy muddy frequency. You'll hear a massive difference here, hopefully. And again, you know, I'm not going to keep that on. I'm just going to, this is more sound design rather than mixing. And look, that's, that's often the shape that I'm after. It's got a nice transient there, uh, which will give it the, the clickiness. And we've got that kind of full, full sustained sound there. Cool. Okay. So let's. Make a little pattern with this. Something similar to the, the track I showed you before, like a little sort of broken beat sort of pattern, something like that. Cool, okay, so let's use our sounds again. Go out here, boost one, and give it that kind of a big reverb -y sound, you, you, you know, no prizes for guessing you want to use reverb, but there's, there's still other things we can do alongside that. Let's just use the, the standard reverb in Logic. And just stop there, but you, you want to be a bit clever about this. If I just solo the reverb on its own, Like a kind of like a sports hall or something, or like a gym. You want you want to shape this a bit more. So if you go into hear the details of this, you can actually make this a bit more um, interesting and, and sort of ambient by just taking the top end just of the EQ. So the EQ alone, the e, the reverb. Sorry. So what you're going to have is, is the actual kick drum sound will be up front and you'll get this sort of reflection of it, sort of, which will sit behind. Yeah, if, any, if ever you wanted something to sit behind in the mix, take the top end off it. Let's get rid of some of the lows as well. It's 
not like a really reflective reverb that's right up in your face, it, it kind of sits behind. Cool, and then these sort of other elements, these sort of more subby elements really. I mean, I think in that, that last track, I, I, I'm not sure what I used, I think I just used a sample for that, but let's just keep with the sort of D DIY ethos here and make something like that, this on our own. So look, the, the beauty of doing it again, um, f from scratch and synthesizing it, is that you can choose the key that you're in. So we want G, so let's, let's stay in G. Again, we're just, we're just using a uh, sine wave, and rather than this kind of punchy sound, what I'm going to go for is a, is a slow attack on the amp here. So we can get like a, this kind of more um, rounded, uh, less percussive sound. So the idea is that they, 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 because they're so uh, pitch perfect with each other, they, they kind of blend together. It's like you're building your own tail. That's exactly it, yeah. You could consider these sort of one sound, really. They're, they're very much meant to sort of uh, blend together. You can take this further as well, add a little bit of distortion if you want a bit more tone. If something's so subby, like that, that really wouldn't carry well on, on laptop speakers or anything. You would not hear that at all. It doesn't have to be in the same key as well. You can actually you can mess around with the pitch here, and you can you can give it some sort of melodic movement. How often do you make your own samples as opposed to just using a sample pack? Uh, well, I, I, I kind of make sample packs uh, as, as part of uh, what I do with music, so uh, often. But, you know, a, a, mix, a mix of both, I think, a healthy mix of both. I think it's, you know, you can go over the top a little bit and, and can, you know, want to make everything yourself, but obviously that's time consuming. What I find is a good strategy is to kind of separate the process of, of stuff like this, sound design, and separate that out from actually, you know, writing and arranging and structuring a track. Often what I'll do is have these loops made so that when I'm inspired uh, and actually uh, want to finish a track, there's, there's stuff there. Awesome. Well, look, that's just a simple way for you guys to start making your own kicks. And of course, this is just the beginning. You can put whatever effects you want on it, personalize it yourself, and then that way you don't sound like every other producer out there. So. That's always a hot tip. Make cool. your own sounds. Don't sound like anyone else. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that video. That's it from us at Point Blank Music School. Make sure you check out pointblankmusicschool.com. Where would people learn this stuff if they came to Point Blank? Uh, this would very much be a sort of sound design thing. Yeah. And, and we do multiple sound design courses, don't we? Yes, there's, there's a, a sort of level four, uh, which is in your, it would be in your first term, uh, or second term, sorry, but first year. Uh, and then you've got an advanced sound design, which is uh, getting towards the back end of the course. Yeah, and you learn a lot of different types of synths and all that kind of stuff. We use a lot of native instrument stuff Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, get, you get to learn everything when you come to Point Blank. It's great. Anyways, hope you enjoyed that. Check out pointblankmusicschool.com and we'll see you next time.